Hey guys, Tyrep here, bringing you a 3v3 today. We are on Hill 400. And you say spawning on the right, we have Yukari Akiyama playing as Okidobi, immediately going for Breakthrough. Inspector Klausel, we mispronouncing that, playing as Osir, who has Joint Tops, Jaeger Armor, and Storm. And finally, Gardening Lalek, playing as Osir, who has Storm, Jaeger Armor, and Joint Tops as well. On the left hand side, we have Warworm playing as the Brits, who has Lindley's Assault, Mobile Assault, and Advanced Emplacements. Frodo Synthesis playing as US Forces with Airborne. And finally, Pedro as Brits also. Commandos, Royal Engineers, and Tactical Support. In terms of rankings here, Axis are an arranged team in the low 30s. And the allies are a random team, two players in the 30s, one around rank 50. Fighting here. Close to the cutoff region. Another MG42 coming in from the bottom now though. Sixes do win this fight. Squad staying uh, quite strong there behind the heavy cover. Getting some beacons up. Stempires did charge all the way out here, but uh, rather unsupported. The rest of the army went into the center. So even though they captured that, it's not going to slow the allies down for long. But yeah, two on one down the bottom for uh, Pedro. Did a decent job, but... Not enough to win. Okay, sniper now for the inspector. The universal carrier for war worm getting to work up here. Some nice sandbags. To camp behind. Fusilier just gets absolutely roasted trying to approach. Now, these guys can probably just leave like one squad back here. Hold that position quite nicely. Bit of rotation here. Kubwagen staying defensive. Bring the flamethrower on the Universal Carrier. Okay, don't see the Wasp too often. Does mean that now he's not going to be able to deal with the Kuwagen that effectively, though. Do you have to remember that the uh, Fusilies do have a pretty long range on the anti-tank grenades. So it does make the Wasp a little bit worse. Than it typically is against OKW because of the extra range. Sniper hasn't seen any action so far. Double Pathfinders for Frodo. Picks a shot, then backs off. Section's coming in from the side there. Not getting any damage done though. Back out for some repairs. Officer next. Getting a big old camp set up here with the tank traps with the wire. Pretty even split on the map to this point though. Kuwagen coming in. Sniper gets very low there, has to get out. Surprised that the uh, UC hasn't, it looks like it's right on the threshold of removing the engine crit from the AT grenade. Yeah, there it goes. Just after a second or so of repairs. Didn't leave any units up here though to try and defend from that heavy cover position. Tank traps up all over the show to help hold that position. No bolster yet. Getting up a mine, that's a decent idea, but the Kuwagen going into detection mode now. Generally, I'm not like a huge fan of the Wasp, but it can do like a huge amount of damage. 
Very good DPS from it over a, a large span. But if you're up against something like a Kubel, I do favor actually trying to kill the Kubel with the Vickers upgrade. Sniper extremely low. That is crazy risky. Just one stray bullet from that Pathfinder would knock it out there. Oh, there go the Fusiliers. Ouch. Yusuf Blob making some nice work down there. Got a Brit Sniper trying to sneak its way around the corner here. Not going to fire though. The uh, Aussie Sniper healed back up now and getting to work. They've actually got a Ford Med Bunker here. That's kind of interesting. The Brit sniper quite far away from the cow sniper. Oh, there's a second sniper actually from Gardening Lalic. Here it comes. Sections were a little bit too low to hold their position. Oh, and maybe he's going to spot it here. Here we go. And there we go. Brit sniper gets the counter snipe. Gets out of there clean. Well done. Good patience there from Pedro. We uh, charge into this machine gun here. Oh, but no retreat from the Grandiers coming in to Fausts, and that'll be the end of that. Does manage to get the D crew, though. It's a very late retreat. So it's actually quite a late anti air half track, also. S seven minutes or so. But yeah, that was a little bit sloppy. Very late retreat there. Section down as well, though. Not good. Oh, we've got a Bofors up in the center. Okay. Well, that will lock down that VP for quite some time. Got a uh, bit of a cutoff maneuver here, potentially. Looks like he's not going to continue to the other point, though. And uh, a reinforcement half track here for gardening Lalic. Got a couple green ears in sight. Of course, the section's no snares, so can't defend against that. Could keep the sniper on us as well. Oh, we've got the uh, Aussie sniper down here. Retreats. Okay. Better safe than sorry. Doesn't really have uh, enough anti-tank because anti-tank gun was quite far away. So if the half-track went for a dive, probably would have been lights out on that sniper. So I think that's reasonable. To your half-track here. Gets the kill on the Kubel. Focusing down the Pathfinders first there. Looks like the Fuselies have slightly better cover. Most of them in light cover. Can't say the same about that captain. Oh, late retreat there. Does get away though. Vickers decrewed. Looks like maybe by rifle nate. Do have the bolster now for war worm. Makes it a bit safer to jump on top of that weapon. And not lose your uh, model to a sniper while picking it up and lose the whole squad in the process. Very deep cap here from Gardening Lalic, right next to the uh, Allied base. Got the Pathfinder coming around the corner here. Mechanized up for Yukari, by the way. Going into the Walking Stuka. Yeah, reasonable timing for that walking Stuka. Might help break through this uh, Brit camp a bit. They fought assembly there now as well. Really digging in. Oh, this could be the end of the Pathfinders. Oh, no, here comes the anti half track. Struggling to suppress though. And there he goes finally. We've just about got in snaring range. Ready to go. 
Yeah, sometimes that anti half track does struggle a little bit against units in light cover. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of Brents. Sniper stunning them there. Go to Pack Howie joining in now as well in the center. Second Pack Howie coming in for Frodo. Oh, getting in some big trouble. Here comes the first walking Stuka. Targets the pack. How he gets the kill on that. Slightly short of the machine gun inside the trench there. There you go, the Grenadiers. Sniper doing a great job so far. Nineteen kills already. Huge kill counter. Big concussive grenade there. Might actually allow these fuselies to win. And there we go, Frodo cutting and running. Let's not have the Major yet, so it has to go all the way back to base. Machine Gun still just covering this point. It hasn't really been harassed too much. Sniper hasn't got a, any further kills. It looks like he's just been aiming for the counter snipe. Ooh! Tough break there for Frodo. Into your half track going down. But the Breen's just overwhelming the Fusilier's long range there. That Breen blob too powerful. Put them on the officer as well. You don't see that too often. The officer doesn't get a uh, a bonus with the Breen's like the Breen Mandos. Let's get some regular ones. Didn't used to be the case though. When he came from the glider, I believe he still had the uh, Bryn Mandos. Bryn. Your forces have constructed a company command post. Well, there goes the Ford assembly. Pretty well disassembled, honestly, by the Axis. Good coordination there on that attack. But sniper to get in, getting to work now. Six kills all of a sudden. Okay, he's coming down now, but a little bit too late to shut that out. Got to be ready for that walking Stuka shortly again now. It's ready to fire, and a second walking Stuka for Yukari. Interesting. That's a lot of indirect very early on. Could be pretty powerful. Do have to be careful about not getting overrun. By vehicle, so with just the one Rakitten. Go for the bow fours here, it looks like. Pretty easy brace through that, though, for War Worm. Didn't take almost any damage. Did he lose one of his sections again as well? That's just two at the moment. Centaur first, okay. It's coming in at a pretty fast timing, but not lightning fast. Cromwell probably the safer option. Ooh! Ooh, rear echelon go down, trying to repair up that Bofors, which is under siege now from the mortars. Got a bit of base house of fire coming back the other way. So spotting scopes on the half track. Does get a vision bonus, I think, yeah, bit three maybe. So it is actually very effective with the spine scopes as well if you manage to vet it up, and it does get shared veterancy, so it doesn't even need to be in combat. Ooh! Unfortunate there. Oh, there we go, nice counter snipe. But sniper strikes again. It looks like the ally is getting overwhelmed here through the center. Before still standing, but two mortars there. Pack how he's maybe a little bit out of range for auto fire. Mirages are ready though. T gun has to get out now. But our allies doing a pretty good job holding that central. Oof! Man, that is really bad luck. 
And whoever's going to repair that dies fast. He's diving in here. The problem with the Centaur is pretty slow top speed. And uh, doesn't have like smoke shell that he can use to extract himself here. So just instant death. Good walking Stuka hit there. He's a decrow on the pack, but imagine if he made this push with his infantry and his tank at the same time. Maybe the extra vision from the pyrotechnics and veterancy could have spotted these AT guns coming. Dropping some base hearts of fire there on the bunker. Oh, there's layers on bunkers. I didn't see a second one back there, a bit further. So it's going to really shut down uh, Pedro's attack. But yeah, that was reckless stuff with the Centaur. And that's going to set the Allies back a long way. Glider deployed out the back, but right into the clutches of the Flak Panzer. Maybe if that wasn't there, could have got some work done. Maybe decrewed the pack. Now he has to worry about surviving and getting away with this commando squad. Hands a big chase down where the anti-tank guns to guard this. Over at the ambulance. But the flak pans is not going to chase any further. So it's going to survive. If you slid down and does a pretty good job of dodging the walking Stuka. At least everything survived. Did take a four or five model losses though. T-gun in some trouble, but the reinforcements kick in, staying alive. Decides to cut there with the uh, two squads a little bit low on health. So a good breakthrough there from the Axis. Back on the center. Broke the bow force. Four assemblies, but he's now fighting back. Got a Brumbeer first from the inspector. Jackson coming in for Frodo. He has done a pretty good job of splitting these pack alleys. Don't want them to be joints with the double walking Stukas on hand. Don't want to give easy decrews on both of them at once. But egg hits on the walking Stuka there. We've got a Comet for Pedro. That's going to be tough for the Axis to handle. We've got one H tank gun for Gardening Lalek. One, I think one for each of these players. Which is, okay, two for Yukari, actually. Might be tough to contain that. <laughs> He's got a pit on one of these. A pit on the section. I mean, he must have picked that up by accident. Oh boy, engineers down at the bottom. A bit of mortar cover coming in. Getting in deep here, throwing out a flare, looking to take out the next bunker. Took a bit of damage from his own phosphorus though. Pinching forwards here with the spotting scopes. Got the double kittens coming into the center now as well. Looks like the comet took a lot of damage, hasn't done much so far, and a rebuild on the center is interesting. Talamine down here for gardening Lalek as well. Jackson being chased off there by the double raquettes. But now they're on the move. Needs to come back across here with the Jackson, even though it's low, try to deal with this Brumbia. Catches them. Uh big damage. Did he break the forward retreat point? It looks like it. What happened to that ambo? Back at base now. Interesting. Still not that far to have to run back compared to a lot of 4v4 maps. Or 3v3 maps. Oh, there we go. Another counter snipe. The sniper's on fire. 
Go for the mortar next. Has to be careful though. The Brumbeer could rotate across and knock him out pretty quickly. In fact, the LMG Grenadier is there. Luckily, he retreats down this path. If he retreated to the north, could have been the end. Oh, and the pack alleys were slightly too close. Catches both of them there. Dodges the grenades quite cleanly, and here come the commandos now. Doing some good work from in close. Oh boy, big damage down the bottom. Centaur dead, I didn't notice that. But the uh, AT gun decrewed. They're now stolen by War Worm. I wonder if there was a mine there. Let's have the sweepers on this, but they might not have been down there at the time. Squad does manage to sneak their way up here for the Axis, trying to relieve a bit of this VP pressure. Some bars coming through on the Pathfinders now. They're going to be lethal. Enough munis for uh, Frodo to drop in the planes. Next opportunity. Close to the mine there. Got a fuel cache, by the way, for gardening Lalek. These smoking stukas doing. Oh, neither of them particularly close to Vet 2 yet. They get that cooldown bonus. Not that it's as impactful these days with all cooldown bonuses on rocket artillery pieces. Getting nerfed. Throws out a grenade. Still did enough damage for the Paris to win that. Those are the grenades you have to watch out for, you know? If the opponent cannot win without throwing grenades, you have to be extra vigilant. Now backed up by a Panther. Oh boy! Ooh, close call. Oh, here comes the Panther. More speeding up to safety, though. Panther decides not to try and chase. Seems like the Axis is starting to maybe take over a bit. Starting to get those panthers rolling, and why is he going for another centaur? What is this? I don't understand. He doesn't have enough re anti tank ready to defend it either. Very strange. So, one AT gun, one Pierce. The panther decides to back out anyway. He's got no snares as well. Comes the walking Stuka. Okay, we've got the assault artillery down here now as well. The T gun trying to get away off to the side. Black Panzer coming back in. Hoping to capitalize on the anti tank gun out of position here. Centaur can't do anything to stop this. The Panther's coming in for good measure as well. Blocking it on top of it as well even though they got the sweepers it's still enough he's going to recover that stolen pack don't I, I, you know I can see the f first centaur and maybe you know the second if you have enough anti-tank to back it up but the third when you ha only have one AT gun at this stage in the match it's asking for trouble And uh, probably would only be necessary if you really need the anti-air. So far I haven't seen any recon planes I think from the Axis. We've got a lot of munis for the inspector. Checks out to the side repairing up again. Got the Comets in there. Panther coming back into the center though as well. 
Here comes the lamb mattress out the back there. Gets a nasty hit too. Look at that. Pose and pack decrease. Okay, crawling in the planes now. Frodo looking to back the axis off the center. Big damage on the Brumbier as well. Flak Panzer just shoots down both planes pretty quickly, actually. Commander's trying to sneak around a lot of craters now. Let's make Commando's very strong in these team modes. Can just be permanently stout thanks to all the explosion craters. Don't get revealed there. Gonna grenade the machine guns. Pretty spaced, but threw it right into the center. Nearly got the whole unit. Not quite though, and he's got the half track there to reinforce it again. Got the elephant in the center for the inspector. It's gonna make it much harder for the allies. Now we've got a firefly with Pedro. Not gonna stick with the comets. Switching off now. Oh boy, that was a nasty one. Catch the AT gun as I was rolling forwards. Would have just about been in range to uh, return fire. Stolen Vickers here just completely shutting this down. Looks like Warworm gonna lose the AT gun for good. Exchanging grenades here. Not much to do. Oh, Sturmpire is dead up in the north. comes the USF forces. US forces? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, we've got the elephant inching its way forwards here. So far the Allies doing a pretty good job of staying out of range. This is... Okay, uh... The Air Supremacy coming in. Big hits through the center. A lot of Allied squads hanging on by a thread. Elephant didn't back out that far. Got the P-47s coming down now as well. Ooh! Oh my god! P-47s shot down quickly. That Vestadar flak pans are making short work of them. But that... Air Supremacy, that was nasty. Huge losses for Inspector. All his repairs gone. Firefly bouncing there. It's going to allow the allies to hold on to the center for quite a lot longer. The allies are really starting to feel the burn of not having super strong indirect fire. You know, they've got these pack howies. They're doing a little bit. Ooh. Oh, and he gets the wipe too. Uh, they've got the land mattress, but that's all right. No Kachusha, no Calliope though. I was sort of out in debt, right at the base doorstep. Those high vet pathfinders. Formidable. Good dodge, last second there from Frodo, keeping that alive. Not quite enough damage from the commandos to get the D crew there. That mattress coming in. D crew does happen from the sniper though. And the land mattress getting the decrew as well. If the allies could push in here, they could get some major work done now. Oh no, the indirect fire coming back the other way. Nasty stuff. And now the Brumbier as well. The Brumbier went for a bunker buster onto the AT gun. Probably could have caught those guys on retreat as well. But here we go, Jackson's coming in from the side. Main gun crit on the Brumbia. But they decide to disengage, don't want to risk chasing in any further with the elephant. And the panther rotating as well.
Mattress coming down again. Has he gone for double land mattresses? He has. Little damage to the vehicles down the bottom now. Oh, there's the King Tiger. Okay, the Axe is really getting rolling now with these heavies. Bit of pressure onto the Elephant. What is that Werfer doing? He was backing away his Elephant. Maybe didn't know where his Werfer was standing. And down it goes. That was really clumsy from the Inspector. Trying to get the wipe on the Pathfinders, and he does! Max Ranger, very lucky break there for Yukari. Firefly meanwhile getting to work while the elephants off the field repairing up. And Tiger getting a big hit there. It's grazed by the Werfer, Brumbeer looking for the kill shot. Not quite but does knock out the uh, section. Could this be the end of the Brumbeer though? Comet needs one more shot. And he bounces it. Pakawi going down. Those Pakawis, they do end up being like very vulnerable, easy targets for these walking Stukas late game. Their mattress coming in as well. Okay, I didn't notice. 17 pounder came up. Did big damage to the King Tiger. Is hit by the uh, incendiary from the walking Stuka, which is very good on getting some placements. Very soaking most of the damage though. Trying to attack ground here. He knows that the commanders are in there. Spotting scopes on the flak pans, I think, seeing that coming. Some tiger rolling up here. Just out of 17 pounder range at the moment, but the elephant here, that comes, that's getting a touch too close. Oh boy, the firefly in some trouble. 17 pounder returning fire though. Could get one more shot perhaps on the broom bear, not quite. Oh, we're kitten in some trouble. Just looks like it's going to survive, but now that that's forced off, the Jackson's coming back in, got the lamb mattress. Try and target those pies on repair. Not having much success though. And here comes the Werfer counter barraging the land mattress. It just survives though. Goes for the 17 pounder as well. That gets interrupted on the repairs. And now the Panther coming in gets the D crew on the land mattress. Firefly there hanging on by a thread as well. The enemy have killed the land mattress crew. 17 pounder gets another big hit in on the elephant. Stealth units, very valuable site here for Pedro. But not able to save that land mattress. So 10 pounds spins around for the Panther, but doesn't get any damage done. I'll find his dead up there in the north. Sniper just used a bit more as a vision unit at the moment. Oh, but gets spotted by the recon plane. Hoping for the kill here. Can the Pintle finish the job? Oh, the LMG Greed is somehow still alive. The Pakawi goes down. So does the Sniper. We complained. Didn't last a, a long time, but it got the Sniper kill, and that was very valuable. 17 pounder finally goes down as well. Big, big losses there for the Allies. And gun crit on the Brumbia again. King Tiger is still very low, but infantry up here doesn't have much anti-tank support. Jackson's right out the back here. Good dodge away from that Werfer, but the squad's already so low. Oh, just hanging in there though. He'd maybe slightly better coordination with the uh, Jacksons pushing up when the infantry gets this deep. So far, pretty good hold in the center for the allies. It's just indirect is stacking up the body counts, but they're just hanging in there still. Feels like the allies haven't really killed anything critical for quite some time now, though. No tanks or 
Didn't really squad wipes. 17 pounder on the other side this time from Warworm. Maybe a little bit too far back and it seems to be blocking a bit of pathfinding in the area as well though. So let's go and take a uh, walking Stuka barrage straight away. Just a regular one and no brace through the damage as well. Down half health from that. Oh boy, Elephant pushes in. There goes the Comet. Trying to appear on the front lines. Set Assault dropped in there by Pedro. There's another walking Stuka barrage targeting the for assembly perhaps. It's targeting the back lines. Rebuild on the second land mattress again for Warworm. Oh, here's the one engineer for repairs. It's a little bit scary. Here we go, the double Jacksons find an opportunity. He's dropping down the planes, hoping for the kill here. They've both got the AP ammo equipped. Elephant backing off here. He got the Panther. Jacksons. Oh boy, they're bouncing like crazy. P47's coming in. And there goes the Elephant. Are they going to stay in here for the Panther? Out of range. Planes getting shot down. Didn't continue the chase. Here comes the King Tiger. Looking for the kill on the Jacksons, but we've got the Firefly there now as well. Might have bitten off more than he can chew. The 17 pounder not quite in range. Big damage here on the King Tiger as well, but the Firefly didn't chase in. One more shot from the Firefly and that would be dead. Oh, but it doesn't even need it. Yukari stopping there, getting caught on the edge. And the Air Supremacy knocking it out. Man, right as the Axis felt like they had the momentum. They got their heavies, they're starting to push in. They lose both the Elephant and the King Tiger. It's going to be tough now. Down to uh, a very low amount of victory points. Still got this nasty indirect fire though. I need to lean on that heavily. Oh boy. Firefly nearly dead. We got a second elephant this time from Gardening Lalic though. Pop capped himself though. Can't build any pies for repairs any longer. The walking Stukas there. Just tearing up the ally back line. Elephant pushing in here quite deep, but not much infantry to support this. Firefly from the side there. Second Firefly, in fact, for Pedro. Double Scots now for Frodo. Pushing quite far here, but Centaur stopping that push in its tracks. Oh boy, a T gun decrewed out the side here. Pushing in with the elephant again. Doesn't have much support for it though. Where's that panther at? Back at base currently. It's a little bit risky. So what happened last time the elephant was pushed up with not enough support. It really seems like the Axis may be lacking a little bit in the anti-tank gun department. Oh, the walking Stuka just gets annihilated. Unfortunate there, running into those uh, rockets. And that's from the vetted up land mattress, which actually has the damage boost. Catches the repairs out the back there, nearly knocks out both squads. But they do survive. But yeah, the land mattress here yeah, gets a damage boost with veterancy. Rockets go from, I think, 60 to 80 damage. So two rockets enough to knock out the walking Stuka at that point. Makes a big difference. Walking Stuka, big damage. Ends up having to cancel the fort assembly. Just the one repairing squad, remember. 
Can't repair up to 17 pounder. It's quite vulnerable at this stage now. This commando is very powerful. 17 pounder slamming home the damage. Fires off some smoke there. Holding on to the center. 55 points left here for the Axis. They are starting to get desperate now. Double Jackson's there standing their ground. Oh, but the huge hits coming in. Got some uh, artillery coming in out the back there, hoping to finish off that 17 pounder. That mattress not hitting too much out the back. The AT gun's pushing in now as well. Allies standing strong in the center, but here comes the Brumbia. Here come the Werfers now as well. Super close range. Looks out the AT gun. Not hitting too much over here though. Smoke on the 17 pounder, so it's not firing here. And this could be the end of one section from Pedro. Staying in there for a little bit too long. Got some uh, base how to fire and then knocks out the worth a big traffic jam for gardening Lalic. And he loses one of his high vet worthers. Fresh worfer for the inspector. He's got a fresh elephant out now, and we got a fresh king tiger. So the Axis, they got their heavies. But they've only got 36 points remaining now. And the 17 pounder still alive. Oh boy, Rifleman dead just like that. Big hit from the King Tiger. Oh, there we go. Jackson's come in. Finish off the Brumbia. Well, we've got the double elephants now. One Jackson down straight away. Mattress out the back, targeting the walking Stuka, I think. Here goes the land mattress though in return. The walking Stuka doesn't muck about. And the allies a little bit vulnerable. Never found time to repair up that 17 pounder. The land mattress destroyed. Just a little bit of damage and this 17 pounder is dead. Looks like the king tag is coming in to try and finish it. getting cold feet though just needs to stay in there and fire one shot oh it looks like the elephant's going to be the one to finish the job and there we go the uh, allies right up against it now you can see pedro all of his stuff low he's lost quite a lot of squads to those land mattresses Take a look at army sizes Axis are actually way ahead now in terms of army size, like way, way ahead. Probably about 50 army size overall. That uh, land mattress and 17 pounder loss for war worm, very, very painful. And I think it's largely because he just never had repairs. He just had repairs on that 17 pounder, the allies would have been able to hold on so well there. Just an all-out war for the central capping point. 21 VPs left for the Axis. Double Pathfinder's in there, but the King Tiger and the Flak Panzer are right there. Fresh Jackson for Frodo out the back. So much infantry for the Allies coming into the center. Where's the jam from the Axis? Just repairing. Here comes the rocket artillery, though. A jam from the Sturmies. But they do manage to complete the capture. 21 VPs left now. The base how to fire out the back. Grand is down. Oh boy, sneaky move here from Yuki, but it's completely undefended. Very good awareness. Rover's dead now to the land mattress. Got a uh, Churchill now for Warworm. That's, I think, a terrible idea at this stage. With the double elephants. Oh, so lucky with that panther. Double misses and it stays alive. Managed to kill the Grandies trying to go for the capture. What happened up here? Where did that Rakitin go? What? Did he accidentally retreat it? There was nothing up there. Maybe the Scots? I feel like he could have at least got the D crew though, just dodging around. But alright. 
Oh. Oh, big hits from the air supremacy. The Axis infantry getting slaughtered there. Three pies dead. And there goes the Sturm officer as well. But they do manage to get the uh, decap up there in the north. So this isn't going to close the show. Six points left here for the Axis. A lot of repairs required for the Axis though. Here comes the Werfers. If they came in from a different angle, if they came in maybe from the bottom, there are quite a few mines. They could just do a devastating push here. Axis tanks are on death's door at the moment. Especially with all those repair squads for gunning Lalek dying. They're really in some trouble, Brumbia. Good smoke, actually. Smoke could really help against these elephants. Oh, there we go. King Tiger goes down. Firefly comes in for the kill shot. And the Sturmpies going down as well. But still the axe is hanging in there. We've got a Rakitin coming in from the rear. Axe is just throwing squads in there. Trying to get the capture going. But unable to do so. Here comes that Rakitin from the rear. And it knocks out the Firefly. Well done. T-gun spinning around for the elephant. Panther there as well on one shot. Second squad of commandos gets the decor on the machine gun. But the allies can't close the show. They need two VPs. Can't just do it with the one. Oh, but the P-47's coming in again. Big damage on the elephant, and it's spinning around. What is he doing with this elephant? Oh, that is some horrible pathfinding for the inspector. Oh, no. What was he doing there? Just need to safely back out of this direction. No trouble. I wonder if the uh, Axis is calling the surrender here. that oh man it was ended up being a little bit one side of their match honestly you know the axis right as they started getting rolling like maybe three times three separate occasions this match they then just got set back massively took huge losses and the allies able to maintain control of the center the uh, axis rocket artillery was very very powerful this game huge kills even though they suffered quite a few losses on different pieces. But uh, it wasn't quite enough. It just about turned the tide. I thought that they were maybe going to be able to do it right at the end there where the Allies were falling behind on army size. But they just had so much infantry to maintain the capping pressure. The Axis were just so desperate. They ran in there for the caps, trying to go for the desperate moves. On the decap and just end up losing almost all of their infantry in the process end up you know with no repairs anymore for their tanks at the, the end of that stage i can understand though you know they're down to 30-ish vps had to do it but ended up uh, losing the game on the back of that just uh yeah just a, a few kind of i would say overall sloppy plays from the axis that cost them you know I think a lot of their losses were due to not dodging uh, air supremacy. You've got so much time to dodge this, so easy to get away from. But I think three times it got used. I mean, look, he lost like three pyro squads to it. Maybe the King Tiger died to it over here. It's just, you know, the, those kind of mistakes are not really acceptable when it's relatively easy to dodge given how long before the planes come through. So yeah, uh, GG, good coordination there by the uh, random allied team, able to overcome the ranged team from the Axis.
Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. Anyway, uh, yeah, oh man, I just looked and I see that my, my oh, the game audio is turned down like to, but under half volume. Oh, god, <laughs> oh well, I'm not gonna re record it. Bad luck, and uh, I have to pay a bit closer attention to that next time. Anyway, goodbye and good luck.